I want to speak to us this morning about know who you are. Friend, it's a time when we've got to know who we are. Do you believe that? I want you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Oh, Father God, you're a good God. Amen. God is a good God, an amazing God. I'm going to read from verse, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm going to read from verse 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Amen. How many people are joined with the Lord today? Come on, give me a wave. Come on. You're one spirit with him. It says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Do you know that the Holy Spirit is in you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That verse of Scripture is, um, do, you not, do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? That, uh, that Scripture was quoted to me one time I was a I was a smoking Christian <laughs> now I'm on fire Christian <laughs> I just smoldering before <laughs> but I was a smoking Christian and I never ever thought that I'd ever be able to give up smoking because it was such part of my life and uh, I used to run uh, have a prayer meeting in our house because I love Jesus and, and I wanted to know more about him and these people came and they started to to share Jesus with us and uh after many, I'd, I would smoke while we were studying the Word of God. And uh, one, after quite a while, might have been th- three or four months, the lady walked up to me and said, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And I said, no, I didn't know that. She said, well, why would you defile it? Now, I never had a cigarette since. It's been, that's been about 50 years Uh, Actually, 49 to be exact. 49 years ago. I have used that scripture on many people and to my knowledge, nobody's ever given up smoking because I quoted that scripture. (laughs) But it touched me, amen. And it touched me. But friend, I want to say this. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And so I just want to share a little bit about this. It says, if you join yourself to sin, you become attached or one with that sin. But if you join yourself to Christ, you become attached to the one or you become attached to Christ. Amen. If you join yourself to him or Christ, you become attached or one with Christ. Today, we are one with Christ. Amen. And we've got to realize that we've been taken out of something and brought into something so dynamic and so powerful that God wants, to, I believe, to, to have an awakening Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. Don't underestimate who you are. Don't underestimate what God can do through you. Don't underestimate that, you know, that all things are possible. But somehow or other, we've got to realize and start to speak it out. I love what you're saying at communion there today because Jesus is our, he's our, he said, you know, to be like him. These things that I do, you can do also. And he stood there in the midst, uh, uh, you know, and he, and he said this, after being tempted and after going through everything that he'd gone through, that were by the, en- the attack of the enemy, and then just instead of coming into the church and saying, oh, you won't believe what happened to me. I've been, you know, I've been bombarded by the enemy. The enemy's attacked me. The enemy tried to do this. No, he just stood up and he spoke 
his vision. He spoke the purpose. He spoke the plan of God. And, and I want to tell you that when he spoke that, instead of speaking what the enemy wanted him to think and feel, if you are the Son of God, and goodness knows what else, he started to speak, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And as he spoke those words, I believe it would have been like thunder and, and lightning and, and clashing and smashing in, in Satan's domain as those words would have penetrated deep on the inside there. And I want to tell you, every devil in hell would have, would have sh just been shattered in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's what you and I have got to understand. And we have this kingdom. The Spirit of God is in us. Amen. Jesus is in us today. And, 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 and I believe that we've got to understand that. I, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in me. That makes me more than a conqueror. That makes me a champion. God gave you the Holy Spirit. God has given us the Holy Spirit. That, that is an amazing thing. I can't earn it, but He's given it to me. I remember as a, as a young Christian there, uh, just, you know, needing something so, to, to break out of myself, to break out of the, 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 my character, who I'd become. I needed the power of God, amen, to triumph over the works of the enemy. And, and I received the mighty Holy Spirit. The Bible also says that you are not your own. One of the great tragedies, I think, is when we, when we think that we can just do what we want to do. Friend, <laughs> can I be real honest? I had no intentions or no desire to come to the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> I am so glad I did. <laughs> I could never be more happier now. But it was not in my wildest imagination. I had other plans. You might have plans, but unless the Lord has His way, <laughs> what's the, how does that go? Unless the Lord has His way, there's no peace, there's no rest, there's no joy. I, I had other plans. I was going to do this and I was going to do that. But the Spirit of God spoke to me. And, and one of the interesting things is Nance was there and I said to Nance at the time, I said, Nance, I, I just feel that God spoke to me and said, go to the Sunshine Coast and plant a church. I was hoping she'd say, that's stupid. <laughs> Instead of that, she said, what a good idea. <laughs> Shattered again. <laughs> and, and, you know, but, you know, I, and, and, you know, you, you, you just go through that. But, friend, I want to tell you that we are not our own. And until you allow God to be God in our lives and let God uh, direct our path and be, be Lord of our lives, we cannot lord it over our own lives. We are not our own. And there's another, it goes on to say that we have been brought with a price. Jesus paid a price for me. I, I often used to say I was on the bottom shelf. He wouldn't have paid much. <laughs> but it's an amazing thing. He paid just as much for me as he did for any other person on this planet. He paid for it in full with his precious blood. Amen. He gave everything that I might be free. He, he went to that whipping pole and had his back opened up. Just, just They say that many people die on that whipping pole. And he, as he did it, he had me on his mind. I love that. Somebody quoted that. It's not my quote. But they said when he was on the cross, he had me on his mind. And friend, I want to tell you, you've got to bring it right down to that. Not just somebody else on his mind, but he had me on his mind. Amen. He had me, hallelujah, warts and all. He had me that was going through stuff in my life that was, I wouldn't want to even speak about today. But I want to tell you that this same Jesus, we've been, we've been brought with a price. He gave it all for us. Amen. I'm so thankful that, about that today. You've got to know who you are. You've got to be able to stand on your feet today. You've got to, got to be able to stand in the, in the face of adversity. You've got to be able to stand before the storm. You've got to stand in it and say, God, before me, who can be against me? It says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I, I thank God that in this house, we, want to, we come to worship and we want to just glorify God here. We don't have an agenda. We don't have this. We don't have that. We just come into this house to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. It's either Jesus or it's nothing as far as I'm concerned. You take Jesus out of this equation, there's nothing. Amen. We're not trying to build something or build a name or goodness knows what. I don't care what you call us. All we want is Jesus. 
All we want is Jesus. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's all I want. Anybody else come into agreement with that? I, I am not my own friend. I am on this planet to do the will of God. To do the will of God, I believe this is how you get under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but that's good for me. Get under the spout. Unfortunately, with, uh, within man also is his will. The need to do his own thing, his way. I believe with, I was just talking, I had a meeting with some people the other day um, about, with the election people and we we're just talking in, in, in ways. But friend, really the church has been overtaken by the world. It is very, very serious, friends. The church has been overtaken by the world. God's Spirit is within us. Man has a will. And the world today, because of, of fame and fortune and, and different things and, and position and, and, and even, even uh, to be able to, to lord it or whatever it might be, to have power over people. Friend, we are here today. And I praise God today that Harold could come up here and share something out of his heart. Amen. That anybody in this church can come up and, and share what they feel God's saying. Is that okay? Let's have an open book, friends. Let's have an open house. Let, let's be able to, to hear what I believe that we need to hear what the Spirit is saying. Do you know that you can lose your blessing by ignorance as well as sin? Many Christians today are, are so far below where God wants them to be and it's out of total ignorance. Lies from the pit of hell. To find, to find God's plan for your life and do it is the greatest treasure you will ever find. To find God's plan for your life and to be able to do it is the greatest treasure you will ever find. You are bought with a price. The greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without purpose. Let me say that again. The greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without pur purpose. Most Aussies think the worst tragedy is a pub with no beer. Hosea 4, 6 says, If my people who are, uh, are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. What is knowledge? The truth. You know what I find today is most people don't really want to know the truth. People really don't want to know the truth. They want an excuse or they want to compromise. I've told this story many times about the young man that, that was a, 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 a drug addict, came into my church, came into my office, looked at me eyeball to eyeball and said, I read the Bible. And God said to me that there is no harm in marijuana. I said, what? Where'd you find that? He opened up his Bible that he had under his arm and he read, look, there is no harm in the pot. <laughs> we laugh, but you know, some people are listening to something just as stupid and believing it. And they've been Christians for 40 odd years. Because the enemy shows lies. He has got a plan. He comes to destroy. He comes to kill. He comes to pull down. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without a purpose. You know what truth is? The Word of God. The Word of God. You know, God does not change his mind. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I've had so many people come up to me and say, well, God's changed his mind. <laughs> How many people know that God doesn't change his mind? Matthew 4.4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Jesus had to 
come when the enemy came at him and, and, and tried to destroy him. He had to bring the Word of God. Friend, we've got to get to the Word of God. We can't play tiddlywinks. We're not coming here to, for a social club. We're not coming here to get tickled. We're coming here to hear the unadulterated Word of God. Amen. Something that we'll be able to get on the inside of us. Something there to be able to hang, into, hang on to. Amen. Something that'll take us through the trials and will lead us and guide us around that, around that path that the enemies are laid in front of you. I believe the Holy Ghost wants to come in power and authority and lead us and guide us through the treacherous ways. Stop us from the serpents and the rubbish that are trying to attack us. Whatever the enemy does, he's got no hope. Amen. One of man's greatest enemies to our purpose is our feelings. Ooh. Once our feelings have been hurt, we are an open target. I don't know about you, but I've been down the gurgle that many times because I've let my feelings rule. Anybody else like that here? Come on, shut your eyes and lift up your hands and shame the devil, eh? <laughs> yeah. See, we've got to understand we are victims of our own personalities. And we allow that we get our feelings hurt. And so we're open targets for the enemy. Just keeps hitting us, hitting us, hitting us. Bang, 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 bang. Before you know where you are, you're, you're in elevator shaft 73. <laughs> I want to tell you, there's a lot of people down there. <laughs> You've got to push the button. Take me to the top. <laughs> Take me to the top. Amen. Once our feelings have been hurt, we're an open target. It's times like this you have to have an Ephesians 4.27 experience. Give no place or opportunity to the devil. Don't give him place. It says in, in James 4, 7, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Don't be double-minded. Keep what God has given you. You know, keeping what God has given us is one of the hardest things in the world to do. I, I want to be real honest here, because there's an enemy that wants to steal from us all the time. And he's had 6,000 years practice on how to get at us. <laughs> you know, he knows the weakness of our flesh. He'll try to get at you. He'll try to, to get under your skin. He'll try to, to pull you down. So keeping what God has given you, when trouble comes, people say, why has God done this to me? Has anybody here ever heard anybody say that? Nobody, just me. <laughs> Why has God done this to me? And people get mad at God. I wouldn't it be refreshing if someone uh, came and said, Why has the devil done this to me? I don't belong to him. And get mad at the devil. <laughs> I'll never serve him. I'll never give in to him. He's a bad devil. <laughs> and, and just say, hey, God loves us. He sent his son to die for me and start filling yourself up with the truth. Start saying how great God is. How great is our God. Hallelujah. How awesome are his praises. Oh man, he is an amazing God. Turn to somebody today and tell them how great God is. He is a good God, hallelujah. He is an amazing God. He is an awesome God, amen. How great is our God. How bad is the devil. He is a bad devil, amen. And he's under our feet. Bad devil, amen. That bad devil is going to get a smack, hallelujah. <laughs> hey, more than a smack. <laughs> bad devil. See, our God loves me so much that He sent Jesus, His only beloved Son, to die for me. That I might have life and that I might have it more abundant. Hallelujah. If we don't have abundant life, friend, we've got to give ourselves a shake and start to say, well, I might be confessing wrong. I might be doing something. I'm going to start confessing about my Jesus. Hallelujah. And how wonderful He is and how amazing He is and how... <laughs> 
When you run out of things, you speak in tongues. When you can't think of anything else, just worship Him, hallelujah. You can't think, just sing a song of praise, amen. Just, just how great is our God? How awesome is our God? How great is our God, amen. Come on, let's shout His praises today. How amazing is our God? He is an amazing God. Keep what God has given you. Keep it. I was reading the, the prophecy this morning there, earlier this morning, and I'm just reading through it there. And I'm thinking, my God. <laughs> and I'm thinking, where did that one go? Oh, I'm going to get that one back. You know what I mean? Because old hairy legs comes and steals from you and gets your focus somewhere else. But I want to tell you, I believe that we're going to see great and awesome things. I have no doubt whatsoever that God's going to raise up a mighty army. I want to tell you, yes, hairy legs will come and he'll do his bit. But I want to tell you, greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. I want to tell you that our God reigns. He rules supreme and he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords and the devil must be under his feet. I want to tell you the devil must submit to God because our our God reigns and He rules. And I want to tell you, no weapon formed against us will prosper because we're going to pull Him down. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. It will smash every yoke. It will break every fetter. It will set the captives free. Hallelujah. My chains are broken. Hallelujah. I've been set free by the... I do not allow the devil. I will not allow him to steal my joy. Praise God. Here ends the lesson. <laughs> Bow your heads with me. You're in, your house, in this house today and you don't know Jesus Christ. You've never ever given your life to this King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes, you've gone to church, you've been here, you've been there, but you know that He is not Lord of your life. And today you're in this house and you say, Jesus, will you come into my life? Will you let this King of glory come into my life? Will you allow this King of glory to raise me up, to lift me out and set me free? If that's you today and you know that you need to surrender your life to Jesus, you see, you've been brought with a price. He wants to claim you as his own. He wants to bless you abundantly. He wants to help you walk through the minefield that is set in front of you. If you're away from God, if you don't know God, if you're, if you're, if, if you're confused and you don't know whether you're, you're, God loves you or not, and you want to make sure you want to make sure that Jesus loves you. You want to give your life back. You want to say, Jesus, come and touch me again. If that's you today, would you quickly slip up your hand? Just say, that is me today. Hey, where did you come from? <laughs> hey, bless you, buddy. That's wonderful. Good on you, mate. Anybody else here quickly? Come on. Anybody else quickly? Come and if you come and come, come. But there's one, his name is Jesus. That's the one you're coming to today. Would you say this? Well, let's the whole church say it. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus we, come to you today, we come to you today and we surrender our life to you. I believe Jesus is the Son of God who died for me. Today, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name.